Hi there and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe, a channel where I share with you my journey as a beginner home hobbyist machinist. And today we're back on the Mini Lathe Basic Series. So in today's video I'm going to be covering turning down to a shoulder and unlike the other Mini Lathe Basic videos that I've done previous to this, today's one we're actually going to be run it like it's a bit of a machinist trial, so something that you might actually have to do in your shop at home. So stay tuned for that guys, because that's going to be really helpful for any of you new machinists out there. And just on a little side note guys, I want to thank all of you that have subscribed recently. We're getting really, really close now to that 500 subscriber mark. So as a little thank you to you guys, I want to do a free giveaway. So my friend Matt over at K&M Customs has printed me these really nice stickers off which is basically Machining with Joe's logo. So, whoop, there we go. So how I'm gonna run this free giveaway, within this video and the next video, I'm actually gonna have one of these stickers hidden somewhere within the video. And the first five people that email me and tell me whereabouts they've seen the sticker, I'll send them one free in the post. But unfortunately, I am only gonna send these out free if you live in the UK. So if you're in the USA or Australia, places like that, please don't email me just because my budget can't really stretch to shipping these overseas. But if you live in the UK, by all means, keep tuned in this video and the next and see if you can find one of these stickers hidden somewhere. So that's enough of that now. Let's head over and I'll talk you through what we're going to be doing today and how we're going to be machining to a shoulder. So first of all, let's talk about what machining to a shoulder actually is. It basically involves where you're turning down your work and then you face it off all in the same pass. So to do this, it's really important that the tool that you're using has a tip angle of less than 90 degrees. So this one I'm using here has got an 80 degree tip angle, but you can get away with sort of 60 degree tip angles as long as it's below 90 degrees. So the test that I want to do today is something that more than likely you're going to encounter in your shop at some point, and that is turning down a shaft to a shoulder to accommodate a bearing. So to do this, it's going to be really important that I get the internal dimensions of this bearing translated over to this shaft. From there, it's also really important that we get a nice 90 degree shoulder on this so this bearing can sit nice and flush on there. So to do that, we're going to need to get a few dimensions. So first of all, we're going to need to know our internal diameter of our bearing. So we're looking at 11.9 there. So 11.9 is the internal diameter. And we're also going to want to know the thickness of this. So that's just under 8 millimetres thick. So we're going to be looking at a shaft with a shoulder that goes down to 11.9 millimetres in diameter and 8 millimetres in depth. Now we've got our measurements, it's about time we head over to the lathe and I show you the setup in what you're going to want to do. So first of all, it's really important that you face off and just do a light machine skim so you can take any measurements. After you've done that, the next thing we're going to do is set how far our carriage is going to come along the workpiece. So you can do that two ways. You can either count the dials on your hand wheel or because I've got a DRO, I'm going to be using that. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting the tip of my cutting tool on the face and when I'm happy it's on there, I'm going to zero the Y position. So with the Y position zeroed, I can now pull my tool away from the workpiece and I can come across eight millimeters. So I'm watching my DRO until we creep up to eight millimeters. So right there, we've got eight millimeters shown on the DRO. So now to make this repeatable and easy to hit and achieve every time, I'm gonna use my DTI gauge. So I'm gonna set a little bit of preload on my DTI. When I'm happy, I've got a little bit of preload on there. I'm gonna move the dial around until it's displaying zero. So 
So now with my DTI gauge on zero and it's showing eight millimeters on the DRO, in theory, when I wind my carriage away, I can now, when I wind it in, when I touch off on the DTI, I can watch it until it goes all the way round to zero. And the DRO now shows eight millimeters. So you know when that hits zero, over here we're on eight millimeters. So that means the repeatability of this operation now is gonna be really good. So the next thing we need to do now is measure our stock. And with that measure, we then can work out how much we need to turn this down by. So our stock here is measuring in at 19.8 millimeters. So doing some quick maths, we need to take off 7.9 millimeters of stock. So having a DRO, that's gonna make this operation really easy. So I've already zeroed my DRO on the face and I've also now zeroed it on the surface of the material that we're gonna be turning down. So as we're going for 7.9 millimeters, half of that is gonna be what we wanna be displayed on the screen. So we're looking at around about 3.95 to be displayed. So I suppose now all we need to do is start turning down some stock. So I'm running the lathe at 650 RPM and I'm going to wind in 0.5 millimetre depth of cut. So you can see the dials moving now on the DTI. So we don't want to come all the way around to zero because we want to save that for our final pass. So we've brought it around so we're just about 0.05 millimeters short of zero. Now with that in place and we know where we're stopping each time, we can just continue doing our cuts like normal. So I'm going to come back now when we're closer to our final position. So our shaft is now currently at 13 millimeters and our target diameter is 11.9. So I'm just gonna dial in a depth of cut of 0.4 here, just to play it on the safe side. We'll do this cut, we'll take another measurement and we'll see where we're at. So again, every time on here, I'm taking this up to 0.05 mil shy of zero. And you can see the hand coming around on the dial now. And about there. So we're actually really close with that part, so it's a good thing we did go under. It's looking like that's about 11.95 mil now. So I might quickly, I'm just gonna add a little chamfer onto here and we're gonna see if we can slide the bearing on now. So now the test fit for the bearing fits on there really, really nice. And as you can see here, it's pretty much flush with the end. So now is when we need to do our main turning to a shoulder procedure. So this time we're gonna go all the way in again. We're not gonna be taking any cut of pass here. So a very light skim. We're gonna take it this time all the way to zero now. And when we get to zero, we're going to lock our carriage and come back with the cross slide. So we're watching our hand wheel now. We want this to come all the way to zero. And with that at zero, we're now going to lock our carriage and we're gonna wind out with the cross slide. And that is turning to a shoulder. So just looking at this from a finished point of view, 
The uh, finish on this aluminium is really nice and we've got a really nice shoulder on there. Perfectly 90 degrees to each other. If we talk about this in machining terms, would this pass quality control? No, unfortunately not. So the bearing, although it sits on there nicely, there is a little bit of movement in there. So we have gone slightly undersized with the diameter of the shaft. Normally with bearings, you want them more of like a press fit. So if we were actually doing this for a customer or a machining application, this would probably fail and we'd have to redo that. The actual length of it is really good though. So using a DTI gauge there to judge how far we were going is really good. You can see that there, that is perfectly flush and is actually really nice. Just the overall diameter was slightly small. In a nutshell, that is turning to a shoulder, a procedure which uses turning down stock and facing all in one pass. So hopefully this will help you guys out for any of you out there still unsure on how to turn down to a shoulder. And if you can get a better fit than I have there, amazing. There we have it then guys, turning to a shoulder in a 10 minute video. I hope you found this video useful and I imagine this is gonna be something that you are gonna to have to do in your shops at some point. So it's a really good basic procedure to get down. Hopefully you'll get it better than I did and actually hit your correct diameter. So thank you for watching this video guys. If you saw the sticker logo in this video, then please by all means email me. My email will be in the description below. If you didn't see it in this video, maybe it's because it wasn't in it. And if it wasn't, it will definitely be in next week's video. Stay tuned guys, get yourself a free Machining with Joe sticker. And for now, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.